Now we're going to talk about creating a new session in PreSonus Studio One. So as you saw, we have a session here pulled up in PreSonus Studio One. This is a finished song. I'm going to close this thing out and we're going to start brand new. So when you install PreSonus Studio One, you're going to need to go to PreSonus.com, create a My PreSonus account. I highly recommend you create a My PreSonus account. They'll give you a software key from Sweetwater if you order it from Sweetwater. Download the software just like you would any application. And at some point you should come to this home screen. This is the home screen. As soon as you open up PreSonus Studio One, this is what you're met with. At the top left, we have an option for creating a new session. Before you click that, I want you to look under setup and I want you to make sure that your audio interface is selected. Okay. So if you have an audio box, you need to make sure that your audio box is showing up. Make sure that it's visible to the computer. If it's not, you really just need to close out PreSonus Studio One. You need to make sure that your audio interface is plugged in and ready to go. So every time you open up PreSonus Studio One, right below the setup tab, make sure your audio interface is visible. If it's not, it might default to your built-in audio from your computer. So on MacBook, this happens quite a bit. A bit. You don't want to be using your webcam <laughs> as your audio input when you're recording music. You always wanna be using your audio interface. Even the lowly audio box has substantially better quality audio than your built-in output on like the headphone jack of your laptop and such. So always use the headphone port on your audio interface. Don't use the headphone jack on your laptop. There's a bunch of options on here. One little note, if you did get the audio box and you're on a Mac, Make sure that it's showing up. If it's not showing up, you might need to download what's called Universal Control. It is a simple, really small file from PreSonus. It's a little software program that basically allows the computer to recognize your audio box. Mine is called the Fireface USB. This is my RME interface right here. It is essentially a two channel USB audio interface. You can see I've got levels coming in here as I'm speaking. I've got my microphone cable plugged in and then PreSonus Studio One is recognizing it, okay? They call theirs Fireface USB, all right? If you've got this stuff set up, you can go through a little bit of the sample rate, but we're gonna get to that in just a minute. Go up to where it says New. When you're creating a new session, this window pops up and they're just gonna ask you, what do you wanna call your new session? Make sure you pick something. I'm gonna go with, on today's video, How Great Thou Art, I'm just going to do like the last two lines of the chorus of how great thou art, but give your song a name. Even if you're just making something up, call it bluebird, call it nest, call it front yard, grass, something. And this is going to ask you, where do you want to save your song session? So make sure you're, this is like file management. Make sure that if you want to save everything to your documents folder, make sure you create a folder specifically for your audio to live. I've got mine in an SSD called songs SSD, and then it's got project files and all sorts of stuff there. Okay. So mine is being saved to my SSD. I've called it how great thou art. This is your sample rate. I highly recommend if you're just getting started out, stick to 48 K sample rate. Okay, you can go to 96. The audio box 96 says it can do 96 kilohertz recording. Just know that the higher you set your sample rate, the more strain it's going to put on your computer. All of your plugins are going to have to work that much harder to produce a sound. And then the theory is, or the saying goes, that our human ears aren't capable of hearing stuff beyond 24K. All right. And the way sample rate works is it's double of whatever the highest frequency is. So, 96k yeah it might make your plugins run better i definitely think autotune and melodyne seem to benefit from a higher sample rate but at the end of the day if you're uploading to TikTok, if you're uploading to facebook and youtube and instagram most of these places are going to downgrade your quality if you want to go for 96k you can just know that every audio file you record is going to be substantially larger data size than if you're recording at 48k for me everything you've heard me do on youtube all the songs you've heard me, the song we were listening to earlier, Nailed to Your Hands, everything's recorded at 48K. So set it to 48K. If you've got an option for 32-bit float, go ahead and set it to that. A quick way of talking about this resolution is how much dynamic range the software is able to handle. So even if we clip 
theoretically, if we clip on the software, we can turn things down so that it's not clipping. You can still clip on the way in on your audio interface, but that's nerdy stuff. We can save that for later. later. At least go with 24 bit. If not, set it to 32 bit float if you can. Time base, I always go with bars. Uh, we'll talk about that later. The length of the song, you really don't have to worry about setting this, but anything around four minutes is gonna be just fine. All right, other than that, you should be good to go. You hit the OK button, and now we are met with a brand new session in PreSonus Studio One. So as you saw earlier, we had the Nailed to Your Hands song, which had a bunch of colorful tracks, and it had this arrangement view. Well, that was like a finished song. This is what the brand new experience looks like. Thank <laughs> you. 